don't be tripping. It's just flipping. I'm a full-time reseller, and this is how I process and store clothing that I picked up throughout the week from yard sales and thrift stores. The very first thing once I get home is I'm going to go through these bags, and I'm going to split it up into what can be washed and what can't be washed. Deciding whether or not to wash the item is based off what the item is made of, so the fabric content, and if the item is new with tags. Of course, if it's new with tags, I'm not going to wash it. If the item is wool, cashmere, or silk, it doesn't get washed. The items that don't get washed sit in a Goodwill bag tied up in the back of my car for at least a few days. Now it's time to go inside and wash the items that can be washed. Right before I wash them, I like to go ahead and cut off the price tag. As of right now, I use gain detergent and I use very little, you guys. A majority of people who buy used clothing online go ahead and wash the item with their own detergent whenever they receive the item. So that's why it really doesn't matter what detergent I use when I'm washing them. All the items have been washed and now it's time to photograph. If you resell clothing, here are the main items that I like to have on hand and it makes my job so much easier. A handheld steamer or a steamer in general. I like to have a lint roller. A fabric shaver is a must, especially if you pick up sweaters, scissors to cut off any kind of leftover tags, a marker and paper. I write down the item name, the measurements, and where it's located. You can do this on a spreadsheet. It's really up to you. I also like the poly bag the clothing. It keeps the item in the condition that it was photographed in. I use 11 by 14. I also like to have 18 by 24 poly bags on hand. This is for any type of larger jacket or coat. Lastly, you want to have a couple good hangers that are in good condition. I have a pair for t-shirts and jackets, and then this one with the clips is great for pants, shorts, and skirts. Now it's time to photograph. So I'll spend the next two hours photographing as much as I possibly can and trying to get through my whole pile that I have set out for the day. Time to take some pictures. You want to make sure your camera's in square mode, so click that down arrow, click the 4-3, and then you're going to click square mode. From there on, it's pretty simple. You just want to make sure you take good photos. So we're going to get a front picture. I like going to the side and taking a slight side photo. I also like to get close-ups of any kind of characters or wording on any item that I photograph. Time to flip them around and get a back photo. Don't forget to photograph the size tag and the actual fabric content tag. People like to know what the item is made of. Next up, it's time to do some measurements. This varies on what item you're actually photographing. Today it's shorts, so we're gonna make sure we get the waist. If you Google how to measure a waist, it's gonna give you a couple different ways. This is how I've done it, and it's worked out every single time. Don't forget the inseam, which is from the cross to the hem or the end of the shorts or pants. I like to write my information down on a piece of paper, so I write the item's name, the waist measurement. To get the waist measurement, that number that you got, you're going to times it by two, and that's what you're going to put in your description. So the waist measurement of these pants is 34 inches. If you have a pair of shorts that are folded and they can be unfolded, be sure you get the inseam for it unfolded as well. I also like to measure the rise of the pants or shorts, so you're going to go from the crotch to the top of the waist. Once all the information is written down, it's time to polybag. A majority of the clothing items I pick up fit into the 11 by 14 poly bags. If I need a larger size, I use the 18 by 24. I usually only need those for coats and jackets and then larger size pants. When it comes to our inventory system, everything goes into a marked tote. I repeat the process until I have a tote full. Here's my list for the next few days until it's time to photograph and do it all over again. 